G'day guys, I'm back with Miracle Max. And SJ has decided to join me today, that's excellent. In the workshop we have a Mazda BT50 2019 model with that 3.2 litre diesel that no one seems to like in it. This one has a lighting issue that we're going to try and sort out together if I can keep her attention uh, for five seconds or so, that'd be nice. So guys, let's get into it. Some time ago I fitted a set of spotlights to this vehicle that the customer did supply and it's been going really well for quite some time but just recently he's noted some really weird things happening including his left hand headlight not working coming and going and the spotlights yeah, working on <laughs> well she got it right that time and sometimes the spotlights will work and sometimes they won't so it's an intermittent fault that we need to try and figure out together looks like SJ's done a runner Anyway, I'll give you a heads up on what I've found with this particular thing. As you can see, the spotlights aren't working at the moment, but the left hand headlight is. I'll give a bit of a wiggle and jiggle and see what happens. Okay, see that? Spotties come and go, and the headlight disappears. You see that? So clearly I'm in the right area. It's a fairly common fault. Flash for the camera, baby. Okay, what's the fault? The customer supplied me with a plug and play system, which means that the connectors are already there. All you've got to do is disconnect this one, plug in this one, etc. Then that incorporates the spotlight system into the existing wiring harness. Nice and easy to fit. The only thing I had to do was over here, I had to do some soldering. That goes onto the high beam side of the light then that activates the relay, which is over that direction. So initially I thought, well, yeah, maybe the soldering wasn't too good. Maybe it's a cold solder joint. But as I wiggled this backwards and forwards, it became clear what the fault was. Let me just disconnect that H4 connector there and show you what I found. Ah, have a look at that, hey? Check that out. She's melted all over here, etc. And oh, even that wire there is a bit melted. So that looks like it might be an earth wire. I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah, it's, it's melted. It's been hot at some point. So as you can see, this connector here is melted in the housing, causing a bad connection. And you can see that the wire has been hot. It's uh, obviously had a bad connection here. If we come back here, which I thought might be the issue, uh, if there was any problems with heat, you would expect to find a bubbled plastic over here, but that looks all good. So the main problem here is the actual connector itself going onto the globe. Of course, what else is going to be a problem? Well, the globe blade that fits into this. So I'm going to replace this here. You can get this connector here with tails attached. So I'll solder that in. And of course, I'll replace the globe itself as well. Let's have a look at that globe, see what it looks like. Oh yes, there we go. You see that? On the back here, you can see that there's been a poor connection here, which may have created heat onto that connector itself. And of course, that melted the plastic, etc., etc., etc. To me, it looks like there's a poor contact here onto the blade, onto the globe, which in turn has started the whole process, increasing heat, high current, and of course, eventually melting that connector in the wiring. So I'm going to replace the globe itself, as well as this here connector. I've seen this before, it's not unusual, but uh, this one doesn't look overly healthy, does it? I went and got myself a connector pack over here as well as a brand new globe. It's a 6055, which is the standard one for this vehicle. So all I have to do now is obviously hook up this connector, solder it in place. I'm gonna physically solder it. Hopefully that will be a good connection and uh, put in our new globe, job should be done. I don't really need to panic about which wire goes where because I can simply just uh, follow the configuration of this one and that should be uh, job done shouldn't be an issue at all of course with halogen globes you're not meant to touch the globe itself because the oils from your finger can create a hot spot when it lights up it can actually shorten the life of the halogen globe should be written on the box somewhere I think oh yeah there it is there it is right on the side of the flap there little picture don't touch the globe 
All I'm going to do is cut off these three wires here and the colours should indicate which one goes where. Shouldn't be a difficult job. This fella here, that fella there, and finally that fella there. I've left enough length on these wires to be able to solder onto these new wires here on my new connector and then that'll give me plenty of leg room, I guess. Leg room? Uh, wire room, whatever. I'm going to use some heat shrink to cover this when I've soldered it and then some conduit to make it look very attractive and keep it away from any heat source or uh, rubbing against metal or whatever you want to call it. Well, I guess that's what happens when you're busy working and not paying attention to your microphone batteries. Yeah, they disappeared. But look, it was pretty basic, guys. All rinse and repeat. Um, just a matter of soldering on correctly. Uh, I'm not sure how much I told you before, but you, mechanically you want to get these wires together to hold to make your soldering a lot easier. Then you heat up the underneath of the wire to get it hot. Then you just touch your soldering iron there and eventually it will just leach or have capillary action through the wire itself. So you put the solder on the top of the wire and it'll eventually just melt all the way through. I've done all three. I've checked it against my original connector and I'm happy that I've got my black, my brown and my grey in the correct order on this particular one. Now look, before I get all excited and do this, that and everything else, I'm just going to shove my um, heat shrink over the top just to protect it, but I'm not going to um, heat them up at this point. Reason being is because I just want to hook up the globe, make sure that I've done it correctly, okay? No use hooking it up only to find out that you've got to uh, re-solder the wire because you've got it around the wrong way. But I'll just hook up the globe now and we'll see if it works. And of course our spotlights work as well. Now remember I can't touch this globe, uh, the actual globe side of it, so you've got to be very careful putting it into place. So I've just got to make sure that I've got my connector and my plug or my uh, globe in correctly. Make it like that and I'll sit it up here hopefully. Turn our spotties off, turn our spotties on. Going from high beam to low beam. High beam with spotties on, high beam with spotties off. So yeah, that looks pretty good. That's interesting, the right hand globe isn't working now so whether that's done a globe as well, I don't know. Let's just tidy up this lot. We can put them all back together because I'm happy that it's working properly now. There you go. It's all tucked away in place. New globe installed. Uh, the wiring connector soldered in place. A bit of conduit on there as well to make sure that the wires are safe. Uh, that looks okay. So let's just double test our work. There we go. What have we got? Spotlights. Spotlight, spotlight, high beam. No high beam on this side. I wonder if that's done the same thing. Uh, let's go low beam. Got a low beam on this side. No probs. We've got a low beam on this side. So yeah, maybe it's done a globe on this side as well. That's unusual. So here's the globe out of the other side, the driver's side, and I can see that the high beam filament is actually broken. That little fella there, and there's a bit of schmuzz cruising around in the background there, which is the broken bit. So this uh, globe needs to be replaced as well. I wonder if he had a bit of a voltage surge at some point. Maybe a high alternator output or something along those lines. A bit strange for both globes to go, but uh, I might check that as well while it's here. But this globe needs to be replaced. And now with this side headlight replaced, let's see if it all works. We've got to turn on our ignition, of course, in this particular model. So we turn on our headlights. They come on, we've got low beam there. We've got high beam including this light over here. Two spotlights, two high beam lights, as well as our low beam lights, all done. I thought I'd just check and see if there's any current or excessive current being drawn. As you can see at the moment, we're just on low beam. We have a look at the current that's being drawn. I'm just on my earth wire, and we're looking at about 4.83 amps, which is acceptable. Let's have a look at high beam. So I'm on the same wire because it's the earth wire, so that'll work for both globes. As you can see, spotlights on, high beams, and we're looking at, uh, let's have a look, it's about 5.83 amps, which is not excessive either. I'm just wondering if it had a voltage spike of some sort that uh, created the uh, globes to do what they did. 
Um, I'm trying to get my uh, Pico up and running at the moment. Do a um, battery test, etc. alternator test, make sure everything's okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is um, test our battery, our alternator and starter motor. We can do that by Pico Diagnostics, as you can see up the top here. It's a separate uh, program from uh, Pico, uh, Pico Oscilloscope. But this is a brilliant one anyway. As you can see down the bottom here, you set up your voltage. It's a lead acid battery, uh, 20 degrees. Yeah, it's probably a bit more than that. I'd say it's about 29 degrees here at the moment. And our CCAs is 740. So all we have to do is hit the start button. It'll tell us to start the engine. I've got the current clamp around the negative side of the battery and uh, that is on channel two, I believe. Channel one has the connections going across the battery, positive and negative. Let's start the vehicle and see what it does. All right, there we go. And let's have a look at that. Well, it's saying it's good in all states, isn't it? Our uh, battery there, for instance, our initial voltage is 13.1, which is good. State of charge, 100%. Lowest voltage, 9.3. Uh, maximum current, 906 amps. And the capacity is 844. Remember that the uh, battery was a 740 CCA, so that's good. We have low resistance on our starter motor and our charging is at 100%. So that, all those systems appear to be working okay. I'll print this out for the customer and then that can be peace of mind for him as well. So guys, this wasn't an overly complex one. SJ is back for the glory as usual. But the important thing is that we fix the lights for the customer. There was that bad connection that kept on playing up. Poor connection creates high current, etc., etc., heat, etc. So I hope you got something from the video today, guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time, guys. That's at the front. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max and SJ signing off. We will catch you later. Get it, guys. Back on Miracle Max. Bye. Oh, you can't train them, folks. You can't train them. Catch you later. Catch you later. Bye.